hillside Bulawayo. Right. So before we go to our topic for this morning, and uh, I see uh, my my timeline is trending, it's buzzing with political insults and uh-huh. and howling. I'm asking myself, what's going on? Because I was offline on off Twitter uh, for the entire weekend. I'm like, what's going on? Then I'm checking my timeline here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite sad what's going on. I see the gold mafia still trending. Um, mm-hmm. Magando is still trending. Magando opened the church as well, a big church. Yo, guys, wow. yo, a, a big church <laughs> was opened the city by Magandua. Uh, and I saw the prison also opening a dam. Was it a dam or was it a river? What was that? <laughs> but also for me, I was just quite, remember the carpet, I saw a carpet story. I, I carpet said water. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? So it's quite sad what's happening there. But also, uh, in terms of what I'm saying there, in terms of political insult happening on my timeline. So Opal said some things about opposition to say mm-hmm. the opposition is now weak, mm-hmm. right? So they're not doing their job maybe to hold the government to account or to hold the ruling party to account. Yo, the insults are coming there. But yeah. I'm asking myself, what's the role of a journalist? What, what is our role? Mm-hmm. Our role as the fourth state is to hold everyone to account, regardless of belonging to which political party, right? Yes. So if you speak out against, um, if I speak out against Zenze, right, mm-hmm. will I be wrong? Or I'm doing mm-hmm. my job as a journalist? I'm doing my job as a journalist, right? So, yeah. I, I, what's happening there on the timeline? People are insulting Opal now. It's quite uh, sad. What's yeah, happening there? I, I don't know. People are always hungry to insult someone. You, you know, you open uh, a comment session or a, a, a timeline. The most most of the comments will be oh. insults. And uh, honestly, uh, we spoke about maturity, yeah. political maturity. Uh, it's, it's not right, really. Let's talk constructive uh, issues. Let's Let's be constructive, really, than to just throw insults that have uh, that have no bearing, really. And at times, they don't even mean anything. They're just flying about. For me, yeah. what's said is that it's coming from the opposition party, the so-called alternative that we see mm-hmm. and we perceive. These are the what are the people our mediums or people who are conscious of democracy, freedom of expression, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you see supporters of the opposition party doing that. For me, it's quite sad what we've been seeing over the years. Now, the supporters of the opposition party are doing that. For me, it's quite sad to say these are the people we see as change makers or democracy change and so on. But they're not the ones who are insulting each other. So for me, it's quite I show the poverty of our politics. What we are not yet mature okay. as the voters, yeah. not yet mature as the politicians to discuss without insulting each other. Some people call each other dogs now. The time I'm like, what's going right. on? So let's yeah. jump straight into what we're discussing this morning. Looking at the issue of the gold mafia. Remember, there was episode one, two, and three, okay. and then the government responded. To later after many weeks uh, of that episode one so what do you want to ask you this morning guys what do you, do you think the government is sincere in terms of solving and investigating the gold mafia scandal and also there was the freezing of the accounts of the um, people who implicated in that documentary how sincere the government those guys banking zimbabwe really Yes, yeah, yeah. I, and uh, I mean, back then we've also had several scandals. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, in, you know, we've had uh, the National Railways housing scandal, yeah. we've had uh, the Willowgate scandal, we've had the Zisco Steel scandal, Harare Airport scandal, a whole lot of scandals uh, over time. And uh, some have been said to be being uh, investigated, and uh, you know, we've had people resigning, some being promoted to yeah. do whatever. and. Uh, no solutions really and uh, you remember uh, when uh, the second uh, repl- when we started the new dispensation the people who were also uh, arrested uh, Zach is on to that yeah. and we are still waiting to hear um, the convictions uh, outcomes of uh, those investigations and now we have the gold mass I remember seeing the timeline people saying what okay now if, if you're frozen the accounts but what proof is there that these accounts have been frozen, mm-hmm. right? If these assets have been frozen, how, what proof is there to say these accounts have been frozen? You always see uh, this prophet uh, Pashin Java throwing, uh, he's responding, aimless, like responding to people, sometimes insulting people in there. Mm-hmm. But nothing has been done. Remember the time when uh, Pashin Java wore in Guane police, right? Mm-hmm. The other piece, the other piece said, well, we're investigating that. We're looking for this man. <laughs> Even up to today, that man has never been arrested. Is he and hiding? We've never been given the update <laughs> on what's happening there. Yeah. So I'm asking myself, how sincere is Zach? How sincere is the therapy in terms of investigating this gold mafia scandal? Remember, also press coming from here. Uh, she was arrested for NASA scandal, but however, she came out of prison. Then, how sincere is our government solving corruption and solving this gold mafia scandal? Yeah, and I'm quite interested to hear what our guests here would, would have to say uh, on that. What do you think about uh, this whole investigation? We've been here before, so we'd like to hear from you. What do you think, and what are your expectations as well? Uh, 
looking at what has been done so far, what were your expectations and what are your other expectations as well on this uh, investigation? Yeah. Remember last time we spoke about Zach to say Zach should, should investigate and also come up with findings. But also, as Zimbabweans, they, there's been the issue of the Auditor General report where there have been a lot of findings found out by the Auditor General, but nothing has been done by our government. But I was looking at Tanzania, I was comparing Zimbabwe and Tanzania, the Auditor General found out many things, the many malicious things happening there in the country. Mm -hmm. And then the Auditor General, the, 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 the President and other guys acted in terms of those recommendations. But in Zimbabwe, you have this report coming year in, year out, but no one is arrested, nothing is done to mm -hmm. solve or act around that. Our police, our even our ZAC, how active are they in terms of solving this corruption issue that are coming out in Zimbabwe, but in particular this gold mafia issue? Now it's out there, the government has bonded and said, we're going to freeze assets and so on. But how sincere are they in terms of really, really solving these issues? Guys, please do request the mic this morning, want to hear from you. In terms of sincerity of the government in investigating the gold mafia scandal, I see you have our first speaker joining us this morning. Uh, speak to, to power. Good morning. Welcome to this morning, Unasaki. Good morning, Brighton. Good morning, Nolasa. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to say might just not, might just upset a few people, but it is reality. Um, I think what we are seeing here is a, re a repeat of what we've seen before, whereby people or associations that people are investigated, nothing ever gets done. They go back to the party and they get promoted and they become senators after corruption scandals. That's what happens in our politics, whether we like it or not, it's it's historical. We have so many scandals where they've been investigated. A lot of money has been, yeah, has been lost within the system, but nothing is done about it. So I think we're gonna see the same thing, whereby headlines are going to say, uh, accounts have been frozen, even though we, we know that money was being moved in banks, so I don't know what sort of value can we actually put in when they say accounts have been frozen and which accounts can the RBZ uh, freeze, okay? I think we need to be honest with ourselves that what we have is a, a government that knows what has happened. Uh, we can't hear you from our end now. Uh, I think your problems with the network. I will try to move to a better spot. We're going to come back to you. Uh, speak to the like, power there. It's the truth, yeah. But we know you that can... nothing will come of this, and only the smaller people or those sacrificial lambs will be put to the slaughter. But the systematic problem that we have is corruption is deep rooted at the top of government in our country, and the government cannot be expected to investigate itself because it will just mean that it will expose itself. So I do not expect anything to happen from here. However, uh, I would like to also say the initial response from the government spokesperson was um, telling when he said, Sagam Jairasi, right? Um, and yes, they are moving slowly, but I don't know, maybe they're waiting for part four of the gold mafia for them to actually uh, do something that is substantial but do we expect anything different from what we've seen in the past no it's the same government investigating itself investigating its ministers who are usually found to be corrupt and who have lost money and they say that they can't stand trial and they're incapable of standing trial but yet they're capable of being ministers within the same government so, yeah, I'll leave it there, but um, I don't expect much from this uh, that they that they, they, they big show that they're showing us now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Speak Truth to Power, for, 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 for those comments. Quite interesting, uh, really, what uh, he's bringing up, Brighton, to say that uh, the government can't investigate itself. And uh, he's saying we've been here before. So... On his end, he's not really expecting anything to come out of this. But also, in terms of when the president came into power in 2017, his speech, first speech was saying what you are going to uh, maybe uh, solve corruption, end corruption. Remember, mm -hmm. the, 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 the military was saying to, to, to when they joined the coup there in courts, they're saying, 
uh, were targeting criminals around the president, right? Yeah. So his aim when he came to power, he said, you're going to solve corruption. Mm -hmm. But how effective has been Zaki in trying to solve corruption in Zimbabwe? How effective has been the Second Republic in Kota Gay trying to end corruption in Zimbabwe? Yes, Zak tried to solve corruption in Zimbabwe. Now you see this gold mafia again. The government took three weeks to respond to this gold mafia. But before that, we had the prima, the chief secretary, uh, George Haramba, responding to generally say, guys, if you're speaking about this thing, you're going to end up in jail and so on and so on. How sincere is the government in trying to solve corruption, in particular when you speak about the gold mafia issue? Then the accounts were frozen. Uh, uh, Sikh was asking, say, how do you know the accounts were frozen? Are these local accounts or international accounts? How do you know these accounts were frozen? So it's quite interesting. Is the UPA still the ambassador? Mm hmm. Yeah, so those are issues that people are asking themselves. Yeah. If the government is sincere, they will tell fire to pay by now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, this one is quite interesting, really, Brighton, because um, as, as you say that uh, we've had uh, names being announced to say so and so uh, accounts have been frozen and everything. And uh, I've seen people saying, but uh, uh, these are the s smaller fish, yeah. right? The, the ones that we are, you know, like the Upid Angels, uh, they are still there, you know, they are not uh, on the list and everything. So, uh, quite interesting, really, and a, a bit confusing. Uh, but also, for me, there was the issue that uh, Upid Angel was saying in there. I think the last the last episode was, was speaking about the issue of bribing. He says, number one, don't have to bribe. Is it appreciation? For me, what's, what's the difference between appreciation and bribery? <laughs> for me, it's one and the same thing. Appreciation and bribery is one and the same thing. Yeah. For me, you are saying, no, we need to appreciate. For me, it's one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the article here, talking about the freezing of the accounts. Mm -hmm. So on Tuesday, uh, the government directed the relevant state organs to institute armed investigations into the allegations that were raised in the documentary, where some people were uh, on record admitting to re receiving uh, kickbacks from the alleged gold mafia, right? Mm -hmm. So the government is also one people in the habit of name dropping and boastful uh, behavior as captured in the documentary to desist from such practices. For me, it was quite sad to say, uh, then continue and then say, you are being directed to immediately identify and freeze all assets uh, for the following individuals, Cleo Pastidodo, you remember him from the documentary, oh, yes. uh, David Chirozi, Emekhule Ledube, and Fete Konaka. May all, you also freeze all assets uh, of legal persons and arrangements associated with them. Can you treat this request as agent? That is the memo that was shared by one of the newspapers there. But also for me, it has been an issue putting, now these accounts are frozen, what's going to happen going forward? If you see if you see part four, episode four, what is going to happen to those people? Is Zach, how is that how effective is Zach in terms of solving these issues of corruption? Guys, please do request the mic this morning. I want to hear from me in terms of uh, how sincere is the government in terms of solving corruption? My book, I see you there. As usual, my book of no goes go away. It's how sincere is the government in terms of solving corruption? Corruption, so, so babe, I see you there. I want to hear from you guys this morning. Uh, in Jabulu, I see you as well. I want to hear from you guys this morning in terms of how sincere is the government in terms of solving corruption. Earlier on, spoke about the issue. What there have been this will get scandal, right? Mm -hmm. There have been other scandals. We saw Fetch in charge of the minister. Now he's now a minister, but he was involved in all of the scandals. I'm saying, what, how sincere this government, if you're bringing back up and we're involved in scandals and also these corruption scandals, how sincere are we in terms of solving this? Yeah, uh, and, and again, uh, we spoke of uh, solving corruption. Where do we start? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, from the list, I'm seeing it's, 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 it's coming from the bottom, really. And uh, maybe it's it's going to be like a snowball uh, thing to say it, it it will take us to the main uh to the main the, to the main ring to to those that are you know spearheading all this but then uh do you think we can really end corruption i wonder it's possible to end corruption but however if you keep on recycling people are implicated in corruption scandals yeah. so even please come for mira she i think you now she won some senate seats for the elections but this person was implicated mm -hmm. So they face some pro jail term and so on and so on. They went to court and so on and so on. But they're now coming back. We saw again with the MP, this main MP member of parliament. Um, what, what is his name? I think he's also contesting again my primaries. The, in his seat there, they're now doing a rerun of the election and so on. But I'm saying this person was implicated in corruption scandals. Mm -hmm. so he caught on something, caught on a scandal. He's implicated by this guy. He's coming back Thank to contest again the election. I'm saying, how sincere are we as a government if we're going to continue to recycle people who have been implicated in corruption scandals and bringing them back to run again for MPs, for councillors and so on? Yeah, that's a problem really there because, uh, you, you know, that root is still there and it, it will grow and, you know, uh, bring in more. But, uh, yeah, we would like to hear from you guys here today. What do you think about this whole investigation of the gold mafia and about uh, episode three as well, episode three of uh, the 
gold mafia what what's your take um where do you think this is, is all going? I see your comments coming in this morning. Uh, someone says, Oh, but in Bofu wrote and on Twitter that the young guys and UPF supporters know nothing about Al Jazeera. Uh, it shows that they don't they don't care. And someone says, What ministers are in the documentary when uh, truth to power? They're asking truth to power what which ministers are implicated. And someone says, Nothing can be done because they're also involved. And then someone says, We need the Zimbabweans accounts close, like. Um, uh, he's the music and so on and so on. So, yeah, so those are the comments coming through this morning. People are saying, are reacting to that. Uh, the talking about the government, how sincere is it in terms of solving corruption? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that issue of names uh, again, uh, the, the, the question about names, the uh, you know, that's the other thing. Uh, you know, we have people talking, they are uh, mentioning names, but then uh, we are not yet there where we have uh, evidence of. Uh, those in government to mm -hmm. say so and so is really involved and here is the evidence. But that's the role of Zach though. Mm -hmm. I'm asking myself, what is Zach doing about this? God? I mean, how I many months now? How I many weeks now is this episode one drops? So, mm -hmm. Many weeks ago. Yeah. But what has Zach done so far? Did they, they issue a statement, Zach, to say, we're going to do APC and they're going to update the nation on this and that. Mm -hmm. I see Mapoko just joined us. Mapoko, good morning. Welcome to this morning, Asaki. Good morning, guys. Morning, Site. Morning, everyone. I... You know, this question is a very difficult one to answer, guys. Um, and the, the more I think about it, the more I struggle whether this is a, a, a you know, the, the, the documentary called Mafia Documentary, whether it is a Zimbabwe issue or it's a, an individual participant issue. Angazumbele and Jisisa on that one. So I haven't really followed uh, on what exactly... Um, the government is doing with the freezing of accounts. I'm not too sure why they've decided on that particular approach for me to comment on that. But I do question the fact whether they, they, their action is to focus on the individuals or focus on the institutes that those individuals are running. Um, um, I don't know, it won't be Memoriami serves me well, because when I was looking at the documentary, there were so many things that were suggesting that um, these individuals who were doing these transactions were to some extent following the requirements of, um, uh, like, you know, e e fidelity, le RBZ. However, even though they were financial transactions, le Mali Zakona, they got away with doing their criminal activities following AMA rules and guidelines, AMA institutes. So I'm struggling to understand really what is the basis of their investigation. Is it just to say, you guys, we don't want you to transact in our country because you are part of a gold mafia? Or, you know, so I think what are they saying about this this, this thing, whether it's a Zimbabwe issue or it's, a, it's an individuals that have been doing bad things in Zimbabwe. I don't know if I'm making sense with that, guys. But that's where um, I'm kind of stuck. Um, but otherwise, I, I, you know, even if they were to turn around and say, I, we want to um, sack Henrietta, we want to sack Hubert, we want to sack all these people, I think they, 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 they also need to be a consideration with what are the repercussions you know if you're dealing with somebody like that guy who is the is it gold leaf abantu lababe tobacco or or ratland uh, what are the what's the impact if they if they remove their business from from zimbabwe and as whether those are all the things that they need to consider in their investigations yeah well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mapoko, for that uh, response this morning. But also, Mapoko, before I let you go, the issue of Zach, we have seen uh, when the president came into power in 2017, he spoke about the issue of corruption, we're going to solve corruption, I've set up Zach and so on and so on to deal with corruption. And we've seen other ministers being implicated in corruption scandals. So you see, I speak, I spoke of Priscam Femir and so on. And then they've been let go afterwards. From that, uh, Mapoko, how do you think our government is sincere in terms of solving corruption? Obviously, corruption is not, not a problem. Uh, there are problems throughout uh, many kinds of corruption. But is our government 
government, how sincere are we as a country to say we are going to solve corruption, looking at that pre- previous history? I think this is the problem that we have, Tina, as our citizens, because we're not always privy to the intricate details of why you know and i think sometimes that 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 falls with us because even with this particular documentary is it though that we've been watching we haven't seen the full detail you know none of us uh, well i'm assuming none of us have actually gone to al jazeera and request documents or, or of their research why did they decide to show certain things and not show other things. So I feel like, you know, our letdown sometimes is probably our, our limited perspective. And then as it says, we see, so you know, we've got that guy, I've forgotten his name, who was doing a ma is it the solar the solar project? But we never really understood why it didn't happen in, in accordance to that expectation. And we've seen them, you know, continue to enjoy a, a particular lifestyle. And, you know, and I, I can understand why it can be disheartening for us as citizens. But I also do feel um, it's unfortunate because we, we continue to see a regular pattern of being let down by a, a system that should be um, protecting us. Thank you so much, uh, Maboko, for that comment uh, and for your contribution. Quite interesting, really. Uh, a month ago, I saw uh, Chombo being released. Yeah. He had 10 charges to his name, and uh, those were dropped, and now he only has two that are being uh, investigated by Zach. So uh, we'll wait and see. And uh, like like Maboko said, you know, we need to understand, maybe, uh, you know, get an understanding of these things so that we know uh, where all this is going. I see we have Vahombe. Well, but please do go ahead to the conference this morning. Okay. Uh, th- thank you very much, uh, Said. I don't know whether I'm audible or not. You are clear, sir. Please do go ahead to the contribution this morning. Oh, okay. Uh, my contribution is going to be very small. Um, number one, uh, I have got a problem with the, with us, the Zimbabwean citizens that uh, number one when the when, when the government in fact when al jazeera uh, released uh, episode one episode two episode three there was a public outcry that the government is doing nothing now the government has started acting people are now crying again. is this government sincere i beg, I, I begin to wonder uh, what do you want? What do you really want? Is the citizens, the government, to actually do? In this case, we find out that we've got people that featured in that documentary that uttered some uh, self-incriminating statements, like the likes of Clopas Shinodo, Yasin, and all that. These guys were telling you how they've been doing their corrupt deals. Uh, using our precious airport, our very important airport, exploiting the systems. And uh, now the government is now acting on them. People are now crying to say that is this government sincere? What did you expect the government to do when people like the likes of uh, Klopas Shilodo come out on that documentary and start saying that this is what I've been doing for 23 years, exploiting this system, right? So it is actually correct for the government to actually act on such individuals that have been uh, dealing, that have been uh, uh, acting in such nefarious acts. Then the other thing that I want to say uh, is that when it comes to the issue that you've been discussing, uh, the previous speaker has been talking about, the issue of the courts of law, cases being dropped and all that. What you need to know is that in the court of law, uh, it is all about evidence. If you don't have sufficient evidence, the case will not hold. If you look at the case of, uh, what's the name, Um, 
the, the the guy the one that was she was talking about uh the, the, the guy for electricity guy this one what's the name uh the one that had his contract paid up front five million dollars and now the issue was taken Jibai. to court and all that yes weak knowledge fire yes you will find out that if you read the documents when it comes to that issue of uh, weak knowledge fire the government was on the wrong side zesa was not supposed to act zpc and zesa were, were not supposed to act the way they did because they actually br breached the contract so what does the law say when it comes to contracts so in this case uh, we need to familiarize ourselves with some of these issues so that we'll be able to understand and when we make comments on public spaces we will not actually uh, make an informed uh, 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 statements or make some uh, uh, end up embarrassing ourselves with ignorance because if you look at what happened with the issue of G5, he, he was actually on the right side of the law. Go and look at the paperwork and the court, the ruling of the court is actually correct. It's actually consistent with what the contract was saying. So in this case, you find out that people are asking these guys, where do they bank their money and all that. You realize that before you obtain a mining license or a, what do you call it, a, a tax clearance in Zimbabwe as a businessman or as a company. You need to open a bank account in Zimbabwe, right? Then you need, uh, from that bank account would then be linked to your Zimra, uh, Zimra uh, uh, tax number, whatever the case may be, so that the government can be able to tax you from that account, seeing the proceeds of the money that is going in and going out and all that. So in this case, for, for people to then say that what, what accounts have been frozen, I begin to wonder whether these people, they understand how business is run in Zimbabwe. And also at the same time, when people, when, when Henrietta Schwein was actually called, she said that before you buy gold in Zimbabwe, you have to make a deposit. For instance, if you want to buy gold that is worth 5 million, you know, worth with five million, you have to deposit five million into Fidelity account and bring another five million. So actually, what you bring in Zimbabwe is actually ten million. The five million will become security, which is going to be in the Fidelity account. So that money is part of the accounts that is the money is in the accounts that are actually frozen because these guys before they actually buy their gold, whether it's worth ten million, they have to bring twenty million. So that 10 million will go to fidelity and security for collateral. Then the other 5 million is the one that they use to purchase gold, the, the other 10 million. So in this case, the, the security money, which is deposited in fidelity, is the one that is actually withheld by government. So I don't know, I don't know what people are talking about. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vahumbe, for, for that contribution. Quite an interesting uh, angle uh, that Vahumbe is taking. And uh, uh, we are now being schooled here, Brighton. Yeah, I see you have just <laughs> joined by penalty. The penalty, good morning. Welcome to this morning. And I said, what's your take on the issue of the government sincerity in terms of solving corruption, in particular the gold mafia documentary? Uh, th th thank you, Ross, for giving me this opportunity. Look, um, before I make a conclusion, we need to uh, look at these things from two perspectives. We've got two groups of people. We've got the Macmillan, um, uh, the Angels, and Radland, or whoever, those other guys, who were given the job by the government to sell gold through licenses, you know? And I'm sure during this um, business activities, the government probably had no reason to suspect that these guys will be doing things which are untoward. Then we have another group of people, the Jidodos, who were clearly acting criminally, if we can go by the way they spoke against themselves. So, obviously, especially with the Jidodos, the government will have an interest because this was smuggling, which had nothing to do with the government. Jidodos and all these other guys were not given a mandate to smuggle gold. It was their own ring. It was their own activity.
they know if these other guys are, are staying uh, the angels and uh Mac, Mac, Macmillan, that's another group of people obviously the government who, who is going to investigate them to see if during their uh, uh mandated activities they did things which were corrupt okay because we don't have the evidence at the moment that they were doing a lot of more things which were corrupt probably they intended to because of the enticing with the 1.2 billion man and all this probably they were going to go through and uh ex corrupt but well, i believe the government obviously has an interest and uh is very very much sincere in getting to the bottom of these issues that's what i can say all what i wanted to say is we've got two groups of people here the outright smugglers who were acting criminally if we look at the way they were they, they were incriminating themselves then these other people who probably could have acted criminally, but they need, still need to be investigated as well. And I think the government is sincere. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avento, for that. I'm also seeing some comments here. Uh, one is saying, clearly you don't understand the role of SAC. They investigate and out of the cases to and out the cases to the judiciary. Like any person, one is allowed legal defense as per the Constitution. If they win the case, then as per the Constitution, they have been exonerated of any wrongdoing unless you, know, unless you now want the law to be applied to please you. And then the other uh, comment is saying, freezing of accounts is allowed to allow investigations to determine if a crime has been committed. Allegations are being made. So how else do you expect them to investigate? Also, it is a new thing that accounts are frozen. Oh, also, is it a new thing that accounts are frozen? No, it's not. Some people need to talk from a point of knowledge, not make, make, make. Okay, quite interesting comments coming through from our people listening uh, this morning. Uh, guys, please do request the mic you want to hear from you in terms of sincerity from the government in solving corruption. Uh, remember, Second Republic, when it came to power in 2018 after election again, they spoke about issue of corruption, or going to solve corruption and so on and so on. Then there was Zach. Uh, mm -hmm. And then how sincere has been Zach in solving corruption in Zimbabwe? And how sincere uh, is the government going to solve corruption? This, in particular, the gold mafia scandal. I see just joined by Tendai. The Tendai, good morning. Welcome to this morning. On a second, what's text say on the issue of the government trying to solve this gold mafia scandal? Uh, thank you very much, um, Koma Brighton and uh, Noshasha, and uh, speakers here and uh, everyone on the space. I just want to to first comment on the on the speaker who was speaking right now when it comes to the issue of saying that there are two groups of people and the explanation that you you have said. Uh, from my own point of view, I I don't think there are two groups of people uh, when it comes to, to the God Mafia. The God Mafia, it's it's one team that works uh, collectively, but everyone have got his own um, uh, task to do, so to speak. They are all criminals. There is no one who is said to be, to be clean. Uh, and uh, there is no one who is said to be small or big because at the end of the day, everyone you have to contribute to the smuggling of God. And uh, so be it those ones who are at the upper echelons uh, of, the, of the system that they are using and uh, those ones that are down in the management, the management environment. So it's like a company where you can see that you you have a cleaner at a, at a company who is cleaning the area where the customers are coming you you can't say that uh, the cleaner is not part of the company hence uh, the company needs to be clean tied and needs to welcome uh, new uh, uh, clients who will be going to see the high profile people in the offices where um, the company is is running its uh, on a daily business so there are no groups here everyone included in the documentary is part of the mafia so everyone should be investigated and uh, i guess uh, everyone should also face uh, a jail term so to speak if it means they have to if they are part 
uh, uh, of what the, the, the judiciary will say uh, and what will the investigation will say. So I just wanted to correct that. Otherwise, I will listen to what the other speakers will be. Today, I will be just uh, there to, to correct some of the issues because some people, they come here to to tell us what doesn't exist and we can see a lot of people they they don't uh, understand exactly what is happening on the documentary so if we leave some other people to 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 feed people with poison we we, we are not doing very well we need to correct and uh, educate our people what is happening but in a nutshell i can only say to you whatever that has been happening all those people included in the documentary are criminals and they need to be bring to the to, to the book and face the charges that they should face thank you thank you so much uh tendai for that uh, quite interesting uh, what all of you guys are bringing up and uh, I, i'll give uh, back to speak truth to power your hand has been up for a while uh, please go ahead uh, thank you very much, Nolanta. Um, I, I think what we have to understand is that this subject is a very uncomfortable subject to uh, my fellow comrades uh, who support the, the ruling party because this is one of the biggest scandal ever in, in I would say, in our, in our corruption history uh, as a country. So for them to understand it, that's okay. It will take time for them to understand it because initially when we were having these conversations, they were saying, oh, it's sanction busting. We were trying to avoid sanctions. And then the RBZ governor came out and said, we are not trying to avoid any sanctions when, we, when it comes to gold because gold is not sanctioned. We can sell gold. Um, and they came back now with a different narrative. But anyways, that's, that's a story for another day. Uh, my, my, I think Mabobo's uh, contribution was that she doesn't understand uh, where, what is actually going on. Okay. I will break it down quickly and simply as this. The RBZ could have sold um, could have sold gold directly without using runners, people who were bringing in suitcases uh, via a different means, right? What that means is that you've got hard cash, you don't have t all the taxes being paid for, and these guys were being paid commissions, 18% commission, right? This is where we are talking about the, 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 the avoidance of a proper system that was in place and that should have been in place and followed. Who is benefiting from this? all this? You, you, you tell me. But one thing I do know is that the government of Zimbabwe, at the highest of level, we will know who is moving gold since gold is the biggest earner of foreign currency in our country and they would want to control that why they didn't or why they allowed this to happen is beyond me and it's been happening for years so for me for the top echelons of government to come across and say that they didn't know this was happening is disingenuous and it's dishonest and it's you know it's a proper lie that we can't um you know allow to 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 to, to fester in our people and what has also been happening is that People have been going to Dubai with our gold. Instead of actually selling that gold and returning with the money, they've been falsifying um, receipts when they come back to say that they, uh, they've they brought in back all this money. And yet they've just been recycling money in the country. Hence the shortages that we've had with our currencies as well within the country. So there is a lot to this documentary. And I can understand when people do not understand the, 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 the depth at which um, this was happening. So for me, I, I forgive my brothers from the ZANU-PF party because obviously it does not sit well with them. But we all know that if you are corrupt in Zimbabwe, then you get promoted in ZANU-PF. That's how it works. And we now need to get rid of that system. And the government cannot give us more fish from a, from a fish tank and expect us to pacify us and be okay with it because we are beyond that now. That needs to stop. We need to have real action and real people need to be arrested. When it comes to the accounts, Passion Java, all these people you talk about, uh, Ambassador at large, he closed 20 accounts in the 20 companies in the UK. He transferred them 
uh, to his wife uh, in March this year. Go, it's there on the internet. Why would he do that if what he was doing was genuine? If he kept all this money, why did he have? Did he feel the need to move all that money, guys? Let's be real about what we're saying here, and let's not lie to Zimbabweans about what has happened. At the end of the day, right? It's our country, and if we say we love it that much, we need to respect its citizen and its resources alike. Thank you. Thank you so much. Speak truth to power, Brighton. I'm seeing a comment here. Someone is saying, "How do you freeze accounts in a country where hardly anyone keeps their money in the bank? Arrest the criminals instead of dancing around the matter." Quite interesting comment there coming from that uh, other speaker there. I see we have other speakers joining us. I see we have a Mofu. Mofu, your end has been up. Uh, Mofu, Mutumwere. Uh, please do go ahead to the conference this morning. <coughs> Yes, yes, my brother. I don't understand, Kuti, what type of a government we have in Zimbabwe. In fact, I think my Zimbabweans, this government came to power in a corrupt way. So how do you expect them to be clean? And for someone to tell me that 10 million United States dollars can come into Zimbabwe, and tell me that the government doesn't know this 10 million that has just arrived from a gold mafia. Wherever you are, if there's any transaction of over a million, the government knows. Don't start to make people like fools. A 20 million coming to Zimbabwe, then you tell me that Mnangagwa doesn't know. That's a joke. We don't want people who are jokers here. And for someone to tell me that maybe they deposit money into a fidelity account, it is deposited in a bank and it's debt money. Why should a, a government deal with the mafia? Those guys, they know they have got criminal history. The other guy was arrested in Kenya and he was dealing with Mnangago. Then you tell me that the government doesn't know. Come on, guys. And you guys from the other party, please. Musaki my jokes are all right. So, Mnanga was corrupt. People they have been saying that and saying that and saying that, but you don't listen. Right now, even his son was put on sanction list. Did he explain to you why his son was on the sanction list? He did not bother to ask. I've got no kind of words for people like you guys. That's why Zimbabwe is where it is now. It's like a shit of a country. There's no water, there's no electricity. People are struggling. Bring any 50 year old man from Zimbabwe and I'll bring a 50 year old man here in a good year old, someone who does not drink, who does not smoke. Bring anyone in Zimbabwe. Those Korokosas are not around, but they are still youngsters. Do you think you'll be happy if your son is a Korokosa? Digging, but it's got nothing to show. You can write me a letter, maybe. My bro, Gwanenga, but we're not Holland. We're not England. No, I think it's our cards. It was my bro, we're going to play one. Please don't be tickets, but there's no. Especially with Zanpia. You are assholes. Don't support things like that. Mofu, let's. Let's have a civil conversation. Let's not uh, uh, insult each other. No, my sister, sometimes I get so emotional that if I'm dealing with people who doesn't think. Yeah, I do, uh, do, do understand you, more for your frustrations, uh, what people are going through. Do you understand you, more? Thanks so much for your contribution this morning. Uh, I see you have another speaker joining us. That's uh, Shangani Warrior. Shangani Warrior, good morning. Welcome to this morning. So, guys, let's try to keep our conversations and also our contributions uh, maturely and civil. I know we are frustrated and we are angry, but let's try to keep our conversations and our contributions clean. Please, uh, let's do that. Shangani Warrior, the mic is yours. Thank you, uh, host, uh, the both of you uh, behind the mic. Uh, firstly, before I get into my submission, I, I would really urge you guys to protect us and also the other listeners. I believe if we want to have uh, constructive contributions from people, having uh, people being uh, insulted and being called all sorts of names is not really a conducive environment to allow people to come in and participate. Uh, 
Uh, so in any case, uh, I will get into into my my part. So I'm the one who's been uh, writing comments in the in the chat in the bottom, and my my reason for taking the mic is because I find it very uh, astonishing that we have people who uh, say that we have a constitution that needs to be followed, but at the same time, because it suits their agenda or whatever they believe to be fact they want the constitution to be put to one side so that things and matters can be dealt with in order to keep them happy that is not how the constitution works that is not how the law works every person is allowed um the opportunity to have legal representation, to have the matters had in court and for the arguments to be had. In front of that jury and in front of the judge and whoever else is present, if you are then found to not be guilty, regardless of whatever anybody else thinks, the law has served its purpose. And that is what we should be looking for. It's not one where we, we hear Kuti, uh, I'm sorry, I think it was a guy called Tendai. Tendai has gone and said, uh, Shangani is guilty of taking bribes from uh, Vahombe because he's ZANU PF and they talk together on spaces. Therefore, Shangani should be sent to jail. 100% there is corruption between the two of them. And that becomes fact. If we are to go to court and the constitution is followed and I'm found to not be guilty, it doesn't matter what Tendai thinks. The law has served its course. So, so we need to actually be respectful of the law and the constitution of the land in itself and stop making things about your personal feelings and thoughts. And then secondly, you know, I, I'm also um, astounded that people are sitting and saying that um, there was all sorts of crimes being committed. The people who were there committing the crimes admitting to committing crimes have had their accounts being frozen but yet you're still complaining and somebody was talking about ministers are involved i cannot remember any single minister being named or b being put on video and even the whole documentary itself for those who have seen it there is no minister being, being spoken about whereas chidodo clearly says i've been doing this for 23 years i've got my guys who would make your bag go past the scanner that is a person who is admitting to committing a crime. We've got um, the other young chap who said he's, he's done this all the time. He can forge paperwork, right? I can't remember what his name was. He is a person admitting committing a crime. And then you have conjecture and insinuations being made of people walking through the airport, pulling their bags. If you see me going through the airport and you put me in a video and you say, oh, Shangani is on a PF, he's pulling that bag, he's probably got gold in that bag. There's no person who's come out and said, clearly they've seen gold. In, in my bag, there is no person who said, I've been stopped and my bag's been opened and you found money in that bag, nothing. However, you want to use your own emotions and what it is that you want to be fact, to be used to uh, criminalize people. Whereas the real criminals who have admitted to have committed offenses and have had their accounts frozen, you are saying, no, they are not the targets that we want. Is it because you have an ulterior motive and you want to target other people who you seem to think are the ones who are guilty, whereas they are not implicated in any form or shape or form in that uh, whole documentary? It is okay, guys, to be bitter and twisted, but you've you, you got to remember this. The country has something which we call rule of law. We have a constitution, we have criminal codifications, we have acts of parliament which govern how people are made criminals or not. If you go to court and you're found not guilty, you have not committed a crime, regardless of what anybody else thinks. Otherwise, do you know what? A lot of us will be in prison because people like Mofu speak the truth and Tendai are unhappy that we support ZANU PF and therefore you think that we're all criminals. No, that's rubbish, Shabal. Why arrest first when well, Zanu? Please protect us, right? Uh, this speaker has a tendency to interrupt people and also insult people. And, you know, for some of us, we end up not taking the mic, right? We've already been called other words here and you allowed him to stay on speakers. You need to do the fair thing and protect us from sp so that we can speak freely. But in any case, I I'm landing. All I wanted to say is, guys, remember, rule of law, you go to court, you argue your case. If you have good lawyers and you win, you're exonerated. If, however, you feel you need to, to go for a retrial, you take it there. That's common all around the world. Numerous companies in, in the West themselves are found to have done so many different things. They go to court and they win the case. It might not necessarily mean that that's the right thing to do, but legally, they have been exonerated. Let, let's try and follow the rule of law and not just make up things to, to please other people. Uh, that's my, my main point. Uh, in any case, thank you very much. I shall step down and host. Uh, please carry on doing a good job that you're doing. You're protecting us and we, we love that.
Shangani, oh, can I so ask you a question thank quickly? Thank you so much, uh, Shangani Warrior, for that. Con- I'm welcome to come to you. Thanks so much, Shangani Warrior, for that contribution, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, we're running out of time. We have two minutes left. I'm going to give you the mic, and then we can ask uh, Shangani Warrior the question, then give it to Ndai, and then we'll wrap up the show this morning. I'm over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, host. Um, it, it's just a quick question, Shangani, if you don't mind. Um, you know, for some people who observe the d- documentary, there's low-hanging fruits that they look at, like, oh, Hubert Angel and oh, oh Henrietta, who are the probably the big fish in, 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 in those docus. And people are wondering, why have those people not lost their jobs or not been, I don't know, paused from uh, holding their current responsibilities. Do you have any thoughts around that? So I'll, I'll touch on, uh, on two that you've mentioned. So now, personally, myself, uh, when I watched the f- episode one and also episode two, I was very displeased with uh, Ubert's conduct because there were certain things that he said in that documentary which I found to be grandstanding and they brought the state into disrepute due to the words he used. Things like, I can take this through. However, if you actually look at it from a practical position, uh, my stomach will have you ever seen what $1.2 billion looks like? Right? That's number one. And have you people actually ever seen what uh, um, diplomatic bags look like? That's number two. So to to get to a point whereby people actually believe that you can take $1.2 billion and wrap it in a bag and put diplomatic tape and walk through uh, any airport and security, it actually beggars belief. The fact that people don't actually understand how these processes uh, are done, right? But it's fine. Somebody can grandstand. But it doesn't mean because when you grandstand, it becomes fact and it's applicable. Right. I think it's very, very important that we actually put a little bit of sanity in some statements that are made. So for me, Uber Angel, the one thing I 100 percent am not happy with was he was grandstanding and he brought the country. Right. And his position to disrepute. Should he have been uh, reprimanded? 100 percent. I believe he should have been. Uh, whatever is happening in the background, that is up to the to the government to deal with. Right. And I'm sure something is happening. Myself, again, as a, a very active member of ZANU-PF, I 100 percent have gone and communicated my, my disgust at the fact that Ubert was allowed to remain in his position without being reprimanded. That, that's a fact. We then move to uh, to uh, Henrietta. I don't really understand why people are going for that woman. At what point in her um, in the phone call did she actually do anything that was illegal? If you can actually go and you can find the part where you you can tell me that what she did w- was illegal, then 100% we can discuss that. But from what I saw, having watched that documentary numerous times, at no point did Henrietta break the law. However, it is because people associate Henrietta with the issues that have happened prior, and they believe that it, whenever her name is mentioned, it's always to do with wrongdoing. And again, you see, my point is this. Find me the point in which Henrietta on that call when she was called by Ubit and she gave uh, information in terms of what needed to happen. She broke the law. If you can find that 100%, we can have that discussion. But, uh, but to my mind, nobody has come with that information uh, and I'm always happy to engage based on facts. Hopefully that, uh, that answers your question. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Shangani Warrior, for that response. And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting what you are saying there. I see we have, uh, our last speaker is going to be uh, Tendai. Tendai, your end is up. Please, you're going to be our last speaker this morning, Tendai. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Koma Brighton. And uh, very much thank you for, for giving me the opportunity because I have also to answer back uh, to what my brother, who just went down now, was talking about. I think the Tendai that he was talking firstly, It's not me of the issue of going to courts and stuff and so forth. That's not me. Then he also mentioned the issue about me of saying that people are against ZANU-PF, people like Tendai, Mofu, and uh, I don't know the other guy, speak truth. Yeah, yes, yes. It's. I think when I gave my contribution, I never mentioned about the party of being ZANU-PF and so forth. I just... Uh, gave my contribution uh, that is according to to the topic that we were discussing today, and I find it very disturbing that whenever we we are discussing issues, uh, people from ZANU PF. Now I'm saying it, 
they tend to think that whatever that we are talking about when it comes to God Mafia, it has to do with parties, of which it's it's not about that because the God um, issue is not about Sun PF, CCC, or whatever Zap. It's a it's it's this is a national crisis. It's it's something that is affecting us as a nation. It's not about who do you follow or, or what do you do. And also, the other thing that I want to quickly also talk about before I land is the issue of um, Shangani saying that uh, we have to um, see what Chidodo and these guys we have been working for years at the airport, for example, that's an example that I'm giving you have to be to be uh, taken into consideration because they are criminals and the uh, Henrietta Rushaya, Hubert Angels and the rest, we have to investigate because there is no evidence. It's it's don't 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 make us like we are fools. It's taking us like we are kids. We don't think. We are people who are also even um we are also educated. We 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 are not uh, just a layman, or so to speak. We are people who knows, and I think we understand these documentaries much more than the the the, the Zanu PF uh, friends of us. They don't understand it very well, and I think it's the high time they have to sit down and come back to us. Then we can educate them. And we do clip to clip telling them, no, this is what they mean, this is what they do, because they are lacking basic education. Because you can't say someone who is just giving an authority of someone to pass with God at the airport, that one is a criminal. And the one who is doing the main thing, like you, Bet Angel and Rushaya, no, we have to look evidence for them and blah, blah. That's that's not correct. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. But what these guys are doing and bringing parties when we are discussing issues, I think and I think it's not a good thing to do. When we discuss issues, let's discuss issues as it is. And lastly, uh, to another speaker, uh, Mofu, who was so emotional, I understand the, the feeling. He's someone who wants to, to uh, express his feeling, but of course, you don't have to insult people using such words. My apologies on behalf of him because he was put down because of that. We want to have good conversation and we have to, without uh, uh, being in a good position to understand each other and talk in a better way, we will not be able to be successful to educate our son peer friends because they're still lacking a lot of things. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Chandai, for that contribution this morning. Thank you so much, guys, for all that joined us this morning, talking about the issue of the government sincerity in investigating the gold mafia scandal. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Quite yeah. emotional, and other people being uh, emotional about the issue there. Yeah, uh, we are touched in different ways yeah. uh, by, by, by this uh, gold mafia revelation and uh, the government coming out and saying, no, we are going to investigate, we have frozen accounts and all that. But, uh, yeah, um, we, we will keep talking about uh, a whole lot of issues. So please do join us uh, every weekday from 8.30 to 9.30. Come and share your thoughts. Let's have uh, civil conversations. Let's have uh, constructive uh, conversations. Yeah. Oh, that's a wrap for today's show. The man, the Tuesday. I keep on saying Monday. I feel like today's no. Monday. The Tuesday edition <laughs> of this morning on Asaki. I'm going to be back tomorrow bright and early from 8.30 to up to 9.30 uh, a.m. From myself, Brighton. And Nansan Shamapiwa. It's bye for now. now.